monolithic core. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Switchback from Silencer Co. The Switchback is Silencer Co.'s latest rimfire suppressor. It's modular and can be configured into a short, medium, and full-size mode. It also has a fourth option to optimize it specifically for use on 22 lr rifles. When you open the box, you'll find the Switchback itself, two disassembly tools, and a rifle thread spacer. While the Switchback primarily is a 22 long rifle can, it is rated all the way up to 5.7. So if you want to shoot something like 22 mag or 17 HMR through it, you absolutely can. Additionally, it's full auto rated for 22 long rifle. The Switchback has a titanium tube and stainless steel baffles. It's 1.07 inches in diameter. And the short configuration, shown here, it's 3.2 ounces and 2.5 inches long. In the medium, it brings it up to 4.3 ounces and 3.59 inches in length. In the full-size configuration, it's 6.5 ounces and 5.75 inches. It has a half by 28 direct thread mounting system, so it should screw right on to the vast majority of rim fire pistols and rifles. For disassembly and maintenance, take the provided tool and use the tube itself as flats. That'll allow you to unscrew everything just in case they're on there really tight. In this case, we've pre-loosened it up already just to make things a little easier. So starting at the front of the can, we've got our 22 caliber front cap. Go ahead and unscrew that off and set it to the side. Behind that, we've got the longer module that simply unscrews. Then we've got this coupler with a baffle in it. Take that off. Behind that is the short module and then the threaded half by 28 end cap that houses a serial number and manufacturer information. Inside these tubes, you simply slide out the baffle stack and they click together. It is worth noting that when you're putting them back, just kind of press everything and rotate it because there are notches to allow them to index properly. Once you've cleaned your baffles or done whatever needs to be done, Simply slide those back inside. Now that we've got everything pulled apart, we'll go ahead and look at how to configure the different links. So every situation is going to use the rear portion and the front cap. If you want it in the shortest one, to simply take that short module and screw everything together. Once it's there, just tighten it down, use those wrenches to get a little extra torque on it, put it on the host and you're good. If you want it in the medium size, take that bigger module, screw it into the rear, and then screw on the front cap. It's very simple and self-explanatory. To reassemble it into the full length, you'll take the rear cap, short module, the coupler piece, long module, and then the end cap, and tighten everything together. Again, it is worth keeping in, in mind, the smaller portions of each baffle will face the rear portion of the suppressor. So if it's oriented in this, with the end cap up here, the baffles will be bigger and they'll go down. Next one will be big, shrink down. Tighten all that up and then you're back to the full size configuration. We discussed another configuration, optimizing it for rifle use. To do that, it's pretty simple. You'll take this long module off 
So remove that front cap, remove that long module, and just rotate it 180 degrees and screw it back all together. So in the rifle optimized, the baffles are going to be a different orientation. The lower portion where it threads onto the host will go from smaller to bigger as you go up. So again, smaller portion near that cap. The larger section, this module here, will be bigger at the base and then smaller as it goes to the front cap of the suppressor. It's a little bit difficult to explain, but seeing it in person, it's very easy. To switch it back to the normal configuration, unscrew this piece, flip it 180 degrees, and then screw everything back together. The only thing that you really need to keep in mind in doing that is if you're at the range or in the field, make sure not to lose a piece or drop the baffles out of the suppressor. Looking at decibel reduction, the switchback had some very interesting and some very impressive numbers. On a Ruger American and 22 long rifle with an 18 inch barrel and Gemtech subsonic ammo, the full length standard configuration came in at 113.9 decibels, which is fantastic. However, if you switch that longer module to put it in the rifle optimized configuration, that average was 107.2 decibels. Without that first round pop, it would have been even less. This puts it at one of, if not the quietest rimfire suppressors that we've ever tested. It sounds absolutely fantastic. You can hear the firing pin and spring when shooting it on a bolt gun. In the medium configuration, it's three and a half inches long, but came in at 113.3 decibels, which is wonderful. It's half the size and performs better than many other suppressors on the market. And in just the little tiny two and a half inch configuration, it was still very pleasant to shoot and came in at 118.0 decibels, which is great performance in a very, very small suppressor. For the pistol testing, we used a Ruger 2245 Lite Mark III with Gemtech subsonic ammo again. In the full length configuration, it was 113.5 decibels, which again is fantastic for a 22 long rifle suppressor. You probably shouldn't do this, and it's not recommended at all, but just out of curiosity, we wanted to see what the rifle optimized version sounded like, and it came in with an average of 122.0 decibels and a first round pop of just over 130 decibels. Definitely, if you're going to shoot it on a handgun, do not put it in the rifle optimized configuration. It still wasn't painful to shoot, but it didn't sound nearly as impressive. When we go to the medium length, it averaged 128.8 decibels, and it was a little loud, but certainly more than comfortable to shoot suppressed. In this two and a half inch small configuration, it averaged just over 140 decibels, 140.8. In this configuration, it did take the edge off, but it was loud. The smallest configuration, I believe, is best suited on rifles and not on pistols. Pistol, just the standard, or the medium are fantastic. Rifle, everything across the board was great, and the rifle optimized was where it really, really shined. The really great thing about the Silencer Coast Switchback is in its full length standard configuration, it's great on pistols, on rifles, full auto rated, multiple calibers. It's a very good, just standard all around suppressor. But in the rifle optimized, if you want to switch that baffle around, it is extraordinarily impressive. If you want a shorter suppressor, it gives you that option. If you want a really, really compact suppressor, to put on the end of a rifle with hardly any added length, you've got that option as well. None of these configurations are necessary. You don't have to go out and change to a bunch of different configurations depending on if it's a rifle or a pistol. It's simply a nice bonus that if you choose to do so, you can. Or 
if the switchback is going to go on a dedicated firearm, you can set it up to that configured length and leave it there. So it's versatile without a necessity to make changes. If the shooter doesn't want to fiddle with things, they certainly don't have to. If you have any questions about the switchback or any other products we sell, feel free to give us a call, email, comment below, or stop on into the shop.